Psychology Wizard. Badly 1966B, the classic cognitive study, evaluated. Here once again is Alan Badley, who back in the 1960s carried out a classic memory study. Let me remind you, Badley was investigating the structure of long-term memory, and his experiment demonstrated that long-term memory is encoded primarily semantically, which means that it focuses on meaning, and when it's presented with information where the meaning is all the same, it becomes confused and finds it harder to organize, encode, and recall information like that. So, that was the study, but is it any good? Now, the exam board recommends that students follow a mnemonic uh, called GRAVE, G-A-G-R-A-V-E. Uh, this stands for Generalizability, Reliability, Applications, Validity, and Ethics. This is an instrument for evaluating studies that is referred to at times in the exam board's mark schemes and often features in the way they word their questions. So I strongly recommend students take advantage of it. I'll go into more detail on each of these five issues in the rest of this presentation. So generalizability, first of all. Generalizability is evaluating the sample. It's asking, is this sample representative? Or, put another way, can you generalize the conclusions from studying this sample to the target population as a whole? Now, Badley had a rather large sample of 72 participants. But, a word of warning, don't get drawn into the trap of saying that just because a sample is large, it must be generalizable. This isn't true. You could have a very large sample that would still be completely unrepresentative. However, one of the things about having a large sample is that any anomalies, which in this case might be people with very good memories or very bad memories, tend to get averaged out. So this would suggest that you probably can generalize the conclusions from the sample if there aren't too many anomalies in it. However, and you should mention this in your answers, Badley carried out an independent group's design, which meant that he had to split his 72 participants between four different conditions. In some of the conditions, there were only 15 or 16 participants. Now, that is not a large number of participants, and one anomaly could make a difference there. So, I think you've got good and bad about the generalizability of this sample, at least in terms of the number of participants in it. You could also talk about who made up the sample. Now, in many ways, this is very generalizable. We've got a range of ages, and we've got men and women. They were all Americans, and sometimes that might be a problem, for example, in studies into social behavior, maybe. However, cognitive research, particularly memory research, tends to be into processes that are pretty universal. All over the world, people use their memories, and all over the world, people have long-term memory. It seems pretty unlikely that there's something unusual about American people's memory. So I think we could again argue that this is a generalizable sample group. Now, the reliability of the study is another matter. Reliability tends to refer to the structure, the organization, the planning, the procedure of a study. Has it been well put together? In the case of Badley, we have to say, well, yes it has. This is a great example of a very reliable study. It's got standardized procedures. Students could replicate it themselves. You could perform it in a classroom with an overhead projector. It would take a long time, but you wouldn't run into any difficulties doing it. Badley himself replicated his own study, of course. Each group of participants went through the procedure five times, and the entire experiment was replicated three times. Uh, it's only the third version that students study and answer on in the exam. So I think the reliability here is sky high. Applications. We're talking about the usefulness of the research. Now, beware once again 
there is a danger when writing about applications of all you do is end up repeating the conclusions. Don't do that. Remember, applications are talking about a group of people, and you need to say who those people might be, who would be able to use the study to do something, and you need to explain what they would use the study to do. Now, one group of people who would make use of this study are simply other cognitive psychologists, and what they did with it was that they built on it. They took Baddeley's findings about long-term memory, and they took his methodology, particularly interference tasks, and they launched a whole raft of memory studies throughout the 1970s. You will go on to look at Baddeley and Graham Hitch uh, building the working memory model, and you'll look at Erin uh, Tolving's research into semantic long-term memory, and numerous other memory studies that are clearly indebted to Baddeley. He blazed the trail, and others followed. But closer to home, students can make use of Baddeley's study. You see, the main finding of his study is that your long-term memory works much better when you've got very clear semantic categories, whereas it gets confused when there's no semantic difference between the material it's been asked to learn. So, if you are revising for an exam, the moral is pretty clear. You need mind maps. You need spider diagrams with different arms in different colours of ink and blue in the top left corner and red in the bottom right corner and you need all the key information separated out because, you see, the very act of creating mind maps forces you to make semantic distinctions between the material that you're revising and that is something your long-term memory soaks up like a sponge. There you go, top tip. Validity then. Well, we've talked about reliability, and if reliability is about how good the procedures are, validity is very much about how good the conclusions are. Are these conclusions that you can believe? Are these conclu conclusions true? Uh, do these conclusions tell us the truth about memory? Now, there's two sorts of validity. Internal validity tends to refer to what goes on within the study. And is there something happening in the study that the researchers aren't aware of that, in fact, could be causing their results? You usually call these sorts of forces extraneous variables. And the solution is to use controls. Now, Badley does this. Uh, one of the possible extraneous variables in his study is short-term memory. What if the participants were using their short-term memory to help them learn the words, not the long-term memory at all. Badly has a solution. He used an interference task to wipe out short-term memory and make sure that only long-term memory was being used. Now, in fact, when you look at his results in the acoustic condition, you realise that there probably was a little bit of short-term memory still going on. So maybe that control wasn't 100% perfect, but the point is that he did put it there. Um, Another example of a control that he brought in was using the slideshow, because in the earlier versions of the experiment, of course, he had a tape-recorded voice reading out the words, and some of the participants found that hard to hear. So he improved it, and therefore increased the internal validity of his research. You've also got external validity, sometimes called ecological validity, and this is asking a different question. Uh, is this research generalizable, that word again, to the outside world? Are the participants doing something that resembles something they would do in real life? I think in this case we have to say probably not. This is quite an artificial study. Now most memory studies are pretty artificial, learning lists of words for no real reason, but sometimes in life you do have to recall things from a list. Badly, however, is getting people to learn a list, and what he's asking them to recall is the order of things on the list. Now, I can't think of many occasions in real life where you have to do that, so I would argue that this is quite an artificial task. However, one thing you could say about the study in its favour is that Badly, at the end, carried out the forgetting trial in each condition, and this was a surprise. The participants weren't expecting it. This 
is quite realistic. Um, think of when students sit an examination, uh, you will have questions come up, but you won't know which questions are going to come up in advance. So the one that does come up is a surprise, and then you have to use your memory in an unexpected way, putting you on the spot, and this is what Baddeley did with his participants. Ethics, then, finally. Now, normally there's a great deal to say about ethical issues in psychological research, but not so much with cognitive memory studies, and in the case of this study, really there's nothing at all. Nobody was deceived, everybody gave their consent, there was no real harm, not even any minor embarrassment to participants. Don't waste the examiner's time, and your own, by telling him that. The examiner doesn't want to know how ethical the study was. We expect studies to be ethical. What you need to do is explain how the study wasn't ethical, or how the researchers went to great lengths to make it ethical. But there isn't really anything of that sort going on in the Baddeley study, so leave this issue out. There we are then. Let's uh, recap overall AO3 evaluation. This is, broadly speaking, a representative sample for a cognitive study. However, because the sample is divided between four conditions, it's possible that anomalies could have spoiled the results in one of those conditions. It's a very reliable method. It's easily replicated, and indeed it was replicated by Baddeley himself, who repeated the procedure with improvements three times. There are many useful applications of this research, notably for students revising for exams who should use mind maps in order to focus on the semantic categories of the information they're trying to learn. Uh, this is a valid study for the most part. It has got controls that ensure its internal validity. However, the task is artificial, so the external validity could be questioned. There are no ethical issues with this research. There you are, Baddeley 1966b Evaluated. I do hope that you will look for other Psychology Wizard videos on these topics.